Hello, welcome to um, another problem session. Um, but, uh, once again, we are uh, trying to lay the groundwork for doing uh, problems and rotation. And I want to be clear before I go and do lots of problems that uh, you are uh, good at um, the definitions of terms and, and different things that go into uh, rotation. Rotation is a traditionally very um, complicated chapter and a lot of people have misconception about how to do things. It's good to have, do not have those misconceptions. Okay, so today uh, let's look at uh, something called torque. Um, a torque by a force. So we, we, uh, we're going to look at torque, torque by a force. So when you say something torque, always uh, uh, there is a there is this thing called torque, uh, torque by a force, uh, torque by a force, and uh, force, and then there is a behind the uh, thing is about a point. Point, or sometimes we say are about an axis and these will become clear as the definition goes so let's take a picture um, to define this so so here is a point um, say let's call it point a and here is some object um upon which a force is acting say in that direction so that's the force vector so is acting at b so you can see right away i didn't say for uh, torque by a force acting at some point about some same point of some other point okay <coughs> so so his force is acting at B and I want the torque about a so here uh, the definition the way we define it and it will become clear as you do more uh, reading that uh, we need to have this dis displacement from A to B, which we will call um, vector R. So the torque in of these forks, uh, you can kind of uh, decorate or just leave as a symbol tau. This this stands for torque by F. Uh, about point A. Sometimes people say tau sub A. Sometimes people can say right, tau of A of F uh, about A. And you can see there's too many things can get in there and then it's confusing to uh, do all of that so you keep this in mind uh, in your mind but you don't write them down just use a simpler symbol like that and and these are simply a r cross b it's defined to be this r cross f r cross f so this is the f definition of torque and you can see just like angular momentum angular momentum was defined as L equals to R cross P. So this is also uh, used a cross product and this uses the cross product. It's not a, it's a product between these two vectors which means it's, it's got a uh, magnitude 
and got a direction. And the rules for this, you can say, um, well, a couple of ways to write these rules. Uh, let me uh, redraw the picture. So, and F is going that way. So, <clears throat> if you redraw the picture, um, I, I can draw a 90 degrees, 90 degrees onto the F direction. So this is the F direction, this is where the R direction is, and this lands on F, 90 degrees. This distance uh, is, uh, uh, this distance is, level is R perpendicular, uh, and uh, the, uh, our perpendicular is called lever arm of F and all those things about and th things like that are be hidden behind there so that's the lever arms <clears throat> so one one way uh, to write the magnitude is to use the magnitude of uh, uh, the lever arm so this is uh, we can lever arm times magnitude of f that will be the magnitude another way to do it is uh, uh, I have this is the r and f was let's see f was like that so that's the F and uh, it started it there and we can, oh wow. So uh, we can draw a 90 degrees uh, to uh, 90 degrees to this on the R. This is, uh, so th this is R, this vector. So this from the fourth step I draw on to R 90 degrees. This will be projection of force onto the R direction and this we can call it force uh, perpendicular, force perpendicular. And so we can write this in terms of, um, uh, si similarly we can write this in terms of Okay, so we can write this uh, as um, another way to write this will be R, take the full R, full R, but we use the projection of F onto the R. So this is the F perpendicular. Okay, so we can do the F perpendicular. So that both will give you exactly the same value. Yet another way to get is to actually get this uh, uh, R and F. Uh, draw another diagram. So this is this is the R vector, and then write the F vector over here in keeping the same direction. And if this angle is say theta then uh, magnitude is r now this is full f times sine theta okay um, you can actually see uh, over here why this will be the case an easy way to see is uh, is to uh, let's see if we can just draw this out and this is the angle theta then this angle is 180 degrees minus theta so in this right angle triangle our perpendicular is uh, from here you can say our perpendicular is this side is r this side is r and this angle say this is whatever phi is so r sine phi and phi is 180 degrees 
minus theta and so if you expand this it's going to be r sine theta and so if you use in here that just gives me r f sine theta so this is the same as that all of these can be shown to be same as to each other but you know depending on the situation you might use this or you might use this or you might use this uh, how about the direction uh, this is a cross product so direction is always going to be uh, use um, right hand uh, right hand rule so if if this is r and so in the same place you write down f and you can see is from r to f you go so it's coming out of the page this will be the torque if this is the r and f is this way it then is coming going away from you torque is like that so this is the way you get the direction now traditionally we call this uh, uh, counterclockwise counterclockwise and we call this clockwise so we have a, it's, it's this called senses of rotation even if the object is not rotating upon applying this force uh, these torques are given a sense of what would happen had this with the only force okay uh, <clears throat> all right so these are the basic definitions uh, then there is a actual uh, you can write this analytically as a cross product which I will illustrate now okay so let's look at another uh, more analytic definition of this so if I were to write um, vector r as x i hat plus y j hat plus z k hat and f as x component i hat plus y component j hat plus z components k hat then this would you you write as a determinant of i hat j hat k hat x y z fx fy fz so, uh, so if you studied uh, some determinant you would know this would come out as a i hat then this minus this right y fz minus z fy so this i component the x component the torque will be this plus uh, y component will be do this and cross out this way z fx minus x f z plus k hat will come out to be x and y then x f y minus y f x okay so th this would also give you the direction so this this gives you direction and magnitude as usual so from there from you can you know how do you uh, like over here you have a vector how do you get the magnitude you get r is the square root of x square plus y square plus z square uh, how do you get a direction of this and you uh, that g use uh, a spherical coordinate theta and phi to tell the direction and if you are just two dimension you just do a single angle okay so that's a, a torque um, Okay, so now we're going to do um, uh, torque um, is equals to uh, dl dt. So th this is uh, dynamic. So how, how do we know this? Well, let's look at what L looks like. L is R cross P then uh, let's take a derivative of this dl 
dt is going to be dr dt cross p plus r cross dp dt and then if this is just a velocity so that's the velocity time mass times velocity and this other one is a uh, newton's second law is it says f by newton's second law so this r cross f <coughs> now velocity and mass times mass is uh, they're in the same direction the parallel parallel vectors that means uh, this will be zero angle between them is zero or sine of zero is zero then this is uh, this equals r cross f is the only thing left and that's the torque so you can see that um, from dp dt equals to f using we get dl dt equals to torque so <clears throat> it's very clear that uh, they are uh, this implies that you can say because I use this I can uh, say that if if this is true if this is true then this equal to this is true right so you can say if dp dt is f is true then dl dt equals to torque so it tells you how uh, angular momentum vector changes uh, so torque actually twists around or changes the direction magnitude etc of the angular momentum so when we are doing a, um, a pure pure uh, rotation uh, about a fixed axis th this thing can be actually done very um, easily so this uh, L will be uh, whatever the I about the axis is uh, that fixed axis is uh, so L L about the axis will be not a vector anymore and that omega of the fixed rotation this may depend on time this may depend on time but uh, uh, if it's a pure rotation then it will come out like this and so um, if if uh, I have a rigid body and this is not changing so this for a rigid body then this will be I just axis and all time will be in the Omega only so we will get a um, DL uh, axis DT will simply be uh, I about the axis and d omega dt right and so the torque um, uh, this will equal to uh, so this equal the torque about the axis so, so if we uh, uh, so th th this will come very simple and this this will call it uh, alpha so i about the axis times alpha is tau about the axis so we're gonna often use this uh, in our study okay uh, um, see I'm gonna stop this now <clears throat>